Welcome back to People's Wall of International's YouTube channel. We are a historical society that promotes, preserves, and defends the history of the Papal Swabs, a group of Catholic soldiers who defended the Papal States during the Ninth Crusade. Behind me actually is a monument dedicated to the Papal Swabs outside of a church whose facade was built after St. John Lateran in Rome and whose inside is a replica of St. Peter's. Uh, so we're here in Udenbosch in the Netherlands, uh, which is home to the Dutch Papal Swab Museum. This is a one-of-a-kind museum. Uh, there's no other museum solely dedicated to the Papal Zouaves in the world. So what we're about to do is we're about to go on a tour of the museum with Arno, who is one of the gracious volunteers in the museum, and another gentleman by the name of Mr. Levin, who is a member of the Pro Petra Sed, which is an organization that was created after uh, the fall of Rome by former Papal Zouaves with uh, the goal to keep the memory alive. They do a lot of great work today uh, doing that, and also Corporal Works of Mercy in defending the papacy. In this video, Mr. Levin, he's a world-renowned expert. He's been uh, researching the Papal Zouaves for over 50 years. He's gonna go very in detail about each artifact in the museum. I highly recommend, if you haven't already, to watch our first video on the history of the Papal Zouaves. It gives a general summary of them and a history of the Ninth Crusade. Um, watching that will give you a lot more context and you'll be able to understand a lot more of what he's saying. He refers often to the Kuckelberg Cathedral, which is a reference to his museum that we're going to later. I would recommend checking out that video later too. So let's get to it. So I'm Arno Homo. I'm volunteer here at the Dutch Schwab Museum in Oudenbos, the Netherlands. And I've been uh, involved in the Schwab now for about 20 years, uh, I guess. Yeah, I'm Levin Brodersen. I'm a Flemish, not uh, Dutch. That's it, from Belgium. Uh, and the last survivor, I think, from the years uh, 1916, who, is, who was occupied with the uh, history of the Papal Swabs. So uh, I think uh, I came here for the first time in 1964 65 to meet uh, Brother Christopher here in front at St. Louis. He died in 1967. And I think that we will unearth another little bit with this list, with the number of uh, the countries that had Papal Swabs. For the American, he only has 17. And I think that we found already some more. Uh, yeah, a few more. But we will work on that. And so we will make a little bit problems to all the boss, you know, that they have to change that number. Yeah. And so, so this is the list of the papal swabs taken after uh, September 20th, 1870. Yeah, so the, yeah. this is uh, the breakdown of all of them. So there were approximately 11,000. That's when you look at the uh, matriculation numbers, 11,000. Some of them went twice. So there yeah. are some three times, uh, three <laughs> times or more. Uh, but this is roughly the breakdown of the Zouaves that there were. So there were 3,000 mm -hmm. Dutch from the Netherlands uh, and uh, from France, Belgium, all the way to one Chinaman. But there is uh, specifically uh, in Holland, they start in 61. But before you had the Zouaves already, they called them even Swaas, but officially it was franco belgium And that number is not included. What? Because the most that started to run only, let's say, in the year 66, the most. But then it was a tsunami. <laughs> yes. It became a tsunami. But even in 60 and before, you had already Dutch in the Purple Army. And in the Franco Belge, you had several Dutch too, who were very active in Castle Fidando. So uh, it's a little bit sorry that they forget them a little bit, yeah. you see. And we shall see in Kugelberg one of those heroes from Castle Fidando, Daniel, is Kepi. I have it in the museum. Oh, also the way. You see, uh, those are most from after 61, from the real Papal Swabs. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, because uh, when uh, they uh, started in 60, they took a French uniform, uniform, and uh, it is uh, it was a big lièvre school in front. Uh, oh, yeah. Who tried to find another uniform inspired on North Africa with the Lama de Rissière, who was his swaps there. And uh, yeah, there was a little bit uh, anxious on it. They say they will make the Turkish, and they will uh, take uh, the Turkish as uh, volunteers in the army of the Pope. Because it was a dress that they called Turkos a little bit. So uh, it was famous in uh, 70, 1870, after Metz, when uh, uh, Napoleon III lost his throne, uh, the emperor, and uh, prisoners coming in uh, France, uh, in Germany, uh, the people called them Turkos. Yes. Uh, that was confusing because after the fall of Rome, the same period, uh, you may say, uh, 20 September, uh, 1870, they went passing through uh, Germany, coming home. It was only on November the 5th that they arrived, arrived in Verviers in Belgium and then went home in Holland and in Belgium. But on their way, the Sherman were looking, are it French or are it uh, other? It are Turkish. So that's a little history. So what we see here is, of course, the papal state, as we uh, had talked about before in 1860. So before the Pope lost most of his, uh, his state. And we have uh, the different... Uh, battles that are listed, right? With the different dots? The different dots are and the battles yeah. are places that were important in the, in the story. They lost the Romagna mm -hmm. at the Marken in 59, yes. earlier, and then it was only Rome which yes, yeah, it's ah, I guess it, this part mm -hmm. was left when Garibaldi, with his thousand, came to Sicilia and uh, took uh, Napoli, he went to the north. So the Italian came from the north to the south to keep, to get the Garibaldi away from the Roman territory, as they said. But in fact, it was to take is their uh, part of the territory. Yeah. And it was in Castel Fidardo uh, that the Swaves, the Franco-Belgian, were uh, uh, fight, they had their fight with uh, Italians. And uh, the final fight was in Ancona with uh, the La Mauricière and uh, foreign troops uh, the, when they were defeated, three quarters of the Casper of the Franco Belgium were dead or wounded. And when the general, the Italian general, saw the list of all those victims, he asked, Is that a list of the soldiers? or the invitation for a ball from the King Louis XIV in France. There was that noble, uh, French noblesse was involved in that battle. They were taken away, uh, prisoners, and left uh, to Marseille. Most are coming back from Marseille to Civita Fecha to take a uh, service again. The Canadian, uh, no, uh, the Irish mostly went over. Some came back. 
and entered into purple swaths. Um, here in this display case, you see a picture of the founder of our museum, Rudolf Christoph IV, Christopher, and the book he wrote about uh, the papal zouaves. Um, and what's going on uh, up above? Well, up above we have to, uh, here a few miniatures just from papal zouaves. It's uh, it's just in order for the yeah. fun. The relics over here. Yeah, on the horseback, it's uh, from the year uh, 50. I have uh, two uh, different in uh, Kukkerberg. You shall see them. But it's uh, good to know that there was an, uh, already a big, an important collection on the, from the Diocese of Haarlem. And he had an important collection too. So he would found the museum here in Oudenbos on one condition. And that was that the, the, Mentana, Lach, the, the Mentana and the collection of Haarlem would be coming to Oudenbos so another... to take them together. And in fact, is this the result of the combination of Oudenbos, of, of Saint Louis mm -hmm. and uh, Harlan. So it was, it was um, uh, what the referring to is the collection that was part of the museum, the diocese museum. So it was not a Zouave museum in itself. No, but no, there were no, no. some it big was a collection. Yeah, part, part, but, but there was some huge pieces, important pieces like the banner, and it was all combined. And it's still, uh, still here, 75, 77 years later. Yeah, but so in fact, uh, in how the it was a part two of the collections mm. uh, from animals, uh, from the, the missionary yes. of the yeah. brotherhood, brought uh, enormous things. And so the Swaas was, let's say, a part. And now it's divided in perhaps three different museums. Huh? Yes, it was what the father of the friars used for the education. They had indeed stuffed birds and uh, things from Indonesia. So for learning, you know, the visual uh, aids for learning. And well, this Zouave part was for history, of yes. course. And the other was natural history. So that's now split into uh, two museums here. And, uh, the institute was a uh, college, eh? yeah. as a school. Eh? So the, the patrimony of St. Peter, what was left after? Um, after 1861, yeah. Yes. So this is the remainder. Yeah. And this stayed this way until uh, 1870, 20th September 1870. Because what not all people realize is in 1861, after uh, the Castel Fidardo, um, so Italy, the, the kingdom of Italy was proclaimed but there were some parts that were not part of that kingdom yet. One is the Papal States, and the other was Venice in the north. So that took a while, but after 1870, 20th of September 1870, Italy is more or less what, what we know now. But that's the history you shall find in uh, Kukelberg. Uh, you have the, the war with the uh, Austrian and so on. And here we find a list of all Dutch uh, Zouaves that were killed either in, in, uh, in battle or later in the... This is the one I'm really looking forward to here, this explanation. Yeah. So that, that is actually uh, shows the entire pontificate of Pope Pius IX in one big <laughs> engraving. You got the papal zouaves up top that are being uh, defending the Pope and being killed. It's very, very interesting, very moving. So, what's going on over here with the with the camp? Well, in the in the camp, um, in the 1860s, of course, the papal zouaves, the regiment grew, 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 and became bigger. And then they needed something to do, and they the army they thought well. We go and to Albano, get a, a campment there and practice 
and that's how they spend the summer there. To uh, yeah, it was after uh, Mentata, eighteen sixty-seven. There was the tsunami, especially Dutch, but also other, and they made uh, three regiments. And in sixty-eight, there were two brigades, and uh, in the second were the Papal Swars. And in that uh, summer, in July, the first brigade came to Rocco del Papa for a camp Hannibal. They called Hannibal because it was in earlier days in the Roman time, on that place that Hannibal was fighting the Romans. And it was a plane, still today, for the Italian army. That's important. And in August, they gathered all uh, Walter's wives, all the companies coming from and the battalions uh, from the different uh, uh, places. And they passed all the mount in uh, Rocca de Papa on the Jack Hannibal. And the 10th of August, August 10th of the American Way, is that the boat came. Uh, the, the mess, ma mess had visited all the uh, companies. And of course here, we've got the Zouaves themselves. And we've got here four mannequins displaying four different kinds of uniforms, really. Yeah. You see here the blue with the black is from the officers and the grey with the red trimmings are from the normal soldiers. And then of course you can see on their sleeves, the more decoration on the sleeve, the higher in rank you are. Yeah. Still today. So it looks like we got a lieutenant over here. Yeah. And then this is a... Uh, one, two, was that a uh, battalion commander? Is that a major? I think this is from uh, Alet. Alet? Oh really? Wow. That's all from uh, Charette, one of the two. Charette. It's very interesting. Uniform. Uh, the, the Charette had the very typical blue. The typical blue. Um, and, then, uh, and what you see here, they've got two kinds of hats. You see? So this, this tape is from, for day to day use. Mm -hmm. And for parades, you have the, the cool ball here, all that. Yeah. So that's uh, for fancy. The, the callback is, you know, became also later on, huh? Eh? It's only after, uh, for, uh, yeah, also Mentana. Yeah, after Mentana. Yeah. But here, the this is a yeah. very unique rifle. Uh, this is the only one we are certain of that it's from the Zouaves. It's got the papal stamp in it, and it's a Remington rifle, a breech-loading rifle, and um, it was from um, Lieutenant Arts. And what happened is after the siege of Mentana, um, they pulled the rifle uh, into bits and hid it in the trousers, and that way they smuggled it back to the Netherlands. And, uh, they put it back together again, and that's how this unique rifle ended up in our museums. So it's the only one we know of that has been certain that has the provenance that we can say, yes, this is an original Zouave rifle. That's that's awesome. We yeah, have one with the stand of British, of yeah, mm -hmm. gift by the Belgian Catholics to the oh, awesome. others. Sorry, yeah. because it's uh, uh, often they say all the rifles from the Pope, the Italian lost them in Abyssinia. That's not, that's only partly, uh, because uh, after uh, the, of, uh, September 21st, after blessed by the Pope, they went to the Italians, deposit their arms. But before that they left uh, St. Peter's uh, place, they changed 
some companies change their modern remittance for old fashioned front of the posts. And so they gave old fashioned arms to the Italians. Partly, huh? Little story. <laughs> And then uh, over here, what's with uh, going on with the child soldier? Ah, it's child. Well, oh, this is not really uh, a child soldier. Uh, yeah, so for everyone, it's, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. It's not, this, this has been later used in processions in the Netherlands. Uh, and, uh, or in Belgium, in Belgium too. too. In Belgium too. It's processions. very locally, but in a procession. So with, uh, the... Um, Boy in the class that had done its best, he got to play Pope. Other priests, you know, uh, girls as brides, and there were also uh, some zouaves sometimes. Yeah. So it was really a really local thing. It was not that everywhere they had zouaves, but um, this one, uh, they got this. And that is uh, Loimans. Louis, uh, he's from here, from Oudenbosch locally. So he was one of the officers that we had from, uh, from here and this. Then uh, where did this uh, bust of the Pope come from and then the beautiful flag? What's the story behind that? Well, the, the busts, they were already at the Institute of St. Louis. And I think it's also made by Pierre Kuipers or at least in his, uh, in his workshop. This uh, architect that has built a lot of buildings and churches in uh, Alden, uh, in the Netherlands in the 19th century. This guy made uh, about uh, the complicities nice that Louis Mouse from Alden both was an officer, but uh, that was a problem for that tsunami of Dutch interpopal army. There were, as well as snow, who spoke French. And that was a handicap for the Dutch. And so there were only a couple little, little Urswaves uh, from Holland who became officer. And even on the moment, there was uh, a little revolution because uh, yeah, uh, they had not enough officers when you compared with the number of normal soldiers. But yeah, the language was a problem. So it's good to know that. So that means it's that there's more there's more French officers than any others because yeah. yeah. And even more Canadian. Oh yes. See where treaty. Yes. That was a handicap, but it was a little cap coming here. But so we have the more the officer and the enlisted cap is and then Yes. So tell us about the a little bit about the the Fez hat, because I see that a little bit, but not too much. No, so that was also, you see them on some pictures wearing the Fez instead of the other hat. Mm -hmm. um, this one is really, over time, it looks very rigid, but that's because of the material. I mean, fine. This was very flexible in the day. A little bit uh, working uniform. So uh, the Fez was part of a working uniform. Yeah, I'm right. very good. And what's the, um, the, um, the red crow? Yes. Stand? Well, that was from one of the Zouaves who was a hospice and he wore it around his, uh, in his arms. Uh, tell us a little bit about the event going on here. Well, this is a um, picture made after the battle of Mentana. And you see, you see that partly because they are wearing their Mentana middle and you see here the wounded and others. And this is. Uh, supposedly taken at the Dutch club in Rome because all nationalities have their own clubs and well of course the Dutch as well and we see here also in the picture that Father de Cruyff from Amsterdam is uh, visiting Rome here when this picture was taken and we saw also uh, Colonel Alet is in the picture and a number of Zouaves that were wounded for instance here we see uh, Zouave uh, Verhulst, who lost his leg, yeah. who lost his leg. He was also at Monte Libretti with uh, Peter Jong, and then he lost his leg. And they, it's a really um, it's a, quite a story how he was moved by uh, the Garibaldians, the red shirts, 
They took him with them to Neola. There he was put with other wounded in, uh, in a kind of shed. And there comes in the story of Mrs. Stone, who is going to in search of wounded from the battle. An Irish, eh? an Irish woman. She was. And the family of the bishop. Uh, and so, and he, um, she found them, and uh, not only him, she was, uh, the, the Zouaves and the red shirt that are wounded were together, and she made sure that they got, uh, the wounds got treated, and, um, well, uh, he lost his leg in this, uh, because it was so infected and gangrene that he lost his leg. I think he is the only one of that group uh, to survive. Yes. I think the picture was still in uh, December, says 67. That, that, it's the King William III's birthday picture. It's about right. Uh, it was a double occasion. They got their uh, Metana cross. And the Dutch uh, priest uh, was uh, coming over. Yeah. So that's how we can date the photograph. There you are, uh, the picture of uh, Papa Alet too, eh? Yes. We're sitting yeah, yeah. over there. Yeah. And then we have a really nice picture of Colonel Charret right here. Yeah. The Charret uh, is a painting from uh, Lionel Broyer. It's uh, Volontaire de l'Ouest, the French who was a very, very young man involved in the uh, German-French war in 70, 1870. And uh, it was uh, De Charette who saw that he was uh, drawing very good, and so we pushed him to go to academy and so on. And uh, Lionel is uh, making, uh, I found made uh, a lot of uh, pictures uh, f from the from the Air de West and from the Battle of Mentana too and so. And uh, his uh, grandson is still living. He's a good friend of mine. And last week, he became 140 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, do you want to take us through some of the, walk us through some of the important artifacts in here? Well, of course, not only the Jouas, we also have this, uh, display case showing a bit about Garibaldi or the Garibaldians. Uh, the red shirt, so um, a bit of a red shirt, a knife that uh, one of the Zouaves uh, took from one of the red shirts. And uh, so, so this is just a bit to show uh, from the other side who we were, or who the Zouaves were against. And here we see some of the, the photographs. And uh, the nice thing here are the coins. So we know how much salary they had. And this is the kind of coins, kind of currency they got, but they, they were. I have to complete a collection in Kukkelberg to see the tomorrow. But here you see uh, Van Vliegen, the Vliegenhaard, Vliegenhaard, with uh, working uh, fest. Eh? Yes, you see that indeed uh, the head. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting for you too, because he became a father, a father and uh, went to the Attils, yeah. to the Americas. Oh, okay. And uh, was uh, very famous, so that they even made a big uh, a stamp of him. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. for the Americans, is that. Uh, yes, he's an immigrant. Inter yeah. Interesting idea, huh? So when we see something from the day-to-day -day life of, of the, of the Zouas, the pistol, but also here, you uh, might think, who got beaten with this? But this is to clean your clothes. So it's not to beat someone, but it's to beat the dust from your clothes. <laughs> now this no, is no, there no. to clean your buttons. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so then you can clean the buttons, you uh, hook it behind the button, so that the polish doesn't get on your uniform. Yeah. So this is all really the day to day. Well, what about the the Sacred Heart uh, medallion? Yeah, the, those were sometimes worn by Zouars, especially with the volunteer de West. Yes. Because uh, when they were dissolved in uh, 
61. The regiment was consecrated to the Holy Heart of Jesus. And it was especially there that they took it. It was uh, with their uh, father, um, do so. The hell action. Oh, okay. Oh. Yes, and here you've got these document holders. And uh, so they, they had the documents, they could put them in these lead canisters. So oh, they would be, be kept dry. Um, you you may not forget it, the Holy Heart, eh? Yeah. Um, for us, we had in Rome, Mentana, a very important battle. It was the charge of the Volunteer de West, Aloigny, on uh, December 2nd. That was the most famous of all. And they went, not with the flag of the Pope, of course, see the German French war, but with the banner of the Holy Heart. Yeah, I love that banner. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And here in this display case, we have some photographs. Here you have uh, the tableau in the wall of St. Louis, how it was in their time. So here we see uh, uh, the general, uh, the sec Cardinal Secretary of State. Yep. Anthony. And we, we also have here, yeah, Robert, yes, who was the first uh, minister of war of the Pope. And next to him is Pater Wilde. He was a Dutch Jesuit priest. Uh, and he ran, for instance, the Dutch club. So he, he was one of the local priests that really took care of the Zwarfs. Good now for him. Cancelled when you are in Rome and you go to pay a visit to Saint Angelo Castle, his uniform is there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's good to know that. And then we have uh, La Masere, so he was the um, he was the commander you... the, during the 18th century. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the commander in chief. And we have Papa Allah, I like the way he's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he was uh, the uh, reg the regimental commander, the Papal Zouaves after eighteen. What was it, sixty five? No, I think uh, uh, like, shortly after eighteen sixty. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> after Beclavere, yeah, yeah. yes, eighteen sixty one. Then so he was in eighteen sixty one. Yeah, nah, that that was uh, a trouble in the in the company in the Zouaves. Yeah, uh, their commander with the Franco Belge was uh, Beclavere. I know. But back to the, uh, in 61, they were with the Swabs at the border to defend and to keep out the Italians. But there was two, the French troops too, were then after Castel Fidardo, too late. And there was a, a trouble with the French and the Swabs that the French didn't rule, wanted that the Swaths were defending the border. Other point was that the minister, yeah, the Mimerode, he thought to enter Italy with the Swaths against the will of the French. And so there was a fight of power and back to Nair, the Ever, we said, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. And so there was a discussion that he had to dismiss from not obeying the minister. But the back to the Ever was a symbol for the French. So a part of the French officers and soldiers, Swaves, left and went home with Beck de Lievre. And after me, they took Annette as the commander. Uh, and they were not the Charette, but because normally the Charette had to become a commander. But he was too royalist. And we want to make the French. And that would yeah. make trouble with 
more trouble with Napoleon. And so they took Papa Alet. He could do mm -hmm. that. And then we have, a, you said the French Dutch Suave officers down here? These are in the, indeed the Dutch Suave officers we see here. Mm -hmm. His, um, and then Art, he's the one whose rifle we showed earlier, right? Yes. Yes. Mm. Very nice. And uh, the highest ranking officer was Captain here, Adolf von Lanschweer, the uh, Egyptian. And like I told before, he, he um, found his uh, Italian love and stayed in Italy. Yeah. But he was already in 68. Yes, he, he was uh, almost yeah. old period. And then this is the... Um, and that the was the Belgian? Yes, there was the Belgian chaplain. chaplain yes. The chaplain um, for the Dutch speaking. And afterwards, he became in Antwerp as uh, the father of a church and went as a deacon to uh, Brabant. But after the 70, he was in Belgium the man and for Holland who was the chaplain. And when the Pope asked to go to Africa to help the missionary, the White Fathers, he was the man who commanded and arranged a little bit all that operation. So he is uh, a rather important man. So in here, what we see here um, is a list of sins. So if you need to, uh, a good Catholic, you need to confess. But if, as we already said, a lot of Dutch boys did not speak any other language. And when you are traveling and you're traveling to fr through France and you're traveling to Italy, it's very unlikely that you will find a, a priest that speaks Dutch. So that um, our priest here thought of this list. He said, well, I will make a list with sins, one in uh, Dutch, French, and Italian. And if you go to confess, you can point at your sin and then no. <laughs> to, uh, and then the priest can read in his language, the language he understands, what you mean. And then at the bottom, he can, the priest can also point at what, you, what your penance is. So, and what you hear also see here is um, a kind of travel guide. So, here you see the Dutch Zouaves, most of them went to Amsterdam to Father de Kruijf. He sent them by train to Oudenbosch. And from Oudenbosch, when they stay the night, they go to Brussels mm. to, for their physical. If they are all right, you can continue. If not, you go back. And from Brussels, you go by train to Paris. From Paris, you go by train 29, 30 hours to Marseille. Then you go on the boat across the Mediterranean, depending on the weather, how long it takes. And then you arrive at Civitavecchia. And then you go again by train to Rome, another physical. And if you pass that, then you're good to go. Then you can start your training as a papal joueur. But it was not always that simple and that way, uh, because I'm preparing a book about the recruitment. And it was all their travel. Uh, quite a lot of Dutch didn't pass Oudenbos. Coming from Friesland, Drenthe, Limburg, they crossed uh, the Bos, the Golden Bos, and went to Antwerp. And what's crazy, and I have no submission about, quite a lot of coming from Oudenbos or the Bos to Antwerp didn't went directly from Antwerp to Brussels, but they crossed the Schelde, the river, to go to Ghent and to take a contract, temporary contract in Ghent, 
he set off in Brussels. Perhaps that the name of the Hemte, who was the main in Alcantara, the main leaders in Ghent, they all started late in 59, 1859, collecting money to support the Pope. Perhaps was that the reason that it was so famous and now, but quite a lot went that they toured to the west and from Ghent to the east back to go to Brussels. Crazy. But that's the fact. And it's normal that from Zealand and Holland and so that they went to Oudenbos. But of course, of the east, they went not to Oudenbos in the west, they traveled directly Saint Thomas Bos, Antwerp, Brussels, or Palsy by Kent. It's a long journey. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, as uh, Arnold told that they had a long drive with uh, by train uh, to go to Marseille, in all directories that they were on letters, always they were writing, oh, it's a long journey, but here, oh, the heat, it's already warming, and you see all the fields. Most are dry, but you see all the fields, it's already growing more and better than at home. They never left their region, their village, or uh, the province. You can't imagine what it was for those guys, young guys. Mm -hmm. It was great leaving your home for the first time. Yes, yes, and, no, and then passing, yeah. the passing of I, I, I said, the ships uh, and all, but that's what that book that I'm writing. There are writers about uh, the Swafs who interpret a little bit for from Suvita Fascia, they walked, they went to Rome, caused by train. But there are some who say they were walking to Rome. It's an interpretation of the word used. And that's a bit of city. city. So when they came to Brussels, they had their medical exam. Yeah. And this is a list yeah. of all the defects you could not have. Yeah. So if you pass the medical, uh, then you're compliant with uh, this document. And what, what's this one here? It, uh, that's very important. Uh, this is uh, the prayer book in Dutch that he had. But... They were very religious. And authors may say and write what they think. As I told about it, <laughs> <laughs> column by train or by feet mm -hmm. to row. No. Very early already, they came together for the Our Lady. And they made a congregation, and that was with their uh, father, Sacré. That was the director of the Belgium College in Rome. And when we had Castel Fidardo, he flew to Castel Fidardo to help the wounded and to soul, soul of the, eh, of the soldiers as a chaplain. Afterwards, he stood as a chaplain with the Papal Swarths. And he became the director of that uh, group that congregation of the Our Lady. And that is the membership book. And you can see the stand of Our Lady and the signature of Sacre. But they came together up on regular times to pray, to have a sermon, and so on. Especially in the 
Mount of Our Lady, May, they gather it on their chambers and sing uh, cuffles for Our Lady, with the Dutch, into, especially the Belgium and the Dutch. Not the French and the other, but that that's still Italy. Uh -huh. Because they found each another huh? across the border. Yes. When one of them died, obviously, mostly it's indicated member of the congregation. And in 66, 67, they made cards with all the names of the members of the congregation who died. It is very interesting. And I was using it uh, very gratefully too for my book on the Vorderheim from August uh, 1867. Yeah. That, that's an important point. All right, so now we're going over one of the key pieces of the museum, the banner. Yes, the banner, the Mentala banner. And it was um, designed and uh, created by Pierre Kuipers. It's a famous Dutch architect of the 19th century. And his main style was Gothic revival style. And, uh, but this is one of his works and it's quite unique. Uh, for, for him, for his works, and then just as a, as a banner as a whole. And uh, what we see here, it is called the Mentana banner because it was created after the Battle of Mentana. So then the uh, Association of Dutch Catholic Ladies uh, that were in Amsterdam, they um, did the fundraising for this banner and uh, that brought up in so much funds that even after that they uh, paid for the banner, they had money left. And that's why they, uh, with the money that was left, they started a kind of pension fund for Zouaves with a disability that came back that, uh, and the disability. So what are in the corners of the banner? Yes, well, the top left, that's the coat of arms of Pope Pius IX, because of course he was the Pope of the Jouaves. And then the top right is the coat of arms of the Netherlands. And then bottom left, that's the coat of arms of the Jouaves. Nalakurori, huh? Yeah. And then on the right, that's for the Dutch of uh, Catholic ladies. Oh, okay. Especially people in Dutch. And, well, and in the, uh, the middle, you see the Archangel Michael defeating the dragon. Mm -hmm. So this symbolizes that the good conquers the evil. Yes. So that's, and around it, you see Bagnorea, Monte Libretti, Mentara, the three places. Banyorea was the first in 1867 by the Zouaves came into combat with the Garibaldians. Monte Libretti, we know of Pitoyon. And then Mentana, of course, the big battle at Mentana. Even the feet are very ornate. It's, it's all one piece, you know. Uh, that's what uh, Kuipers believed in. So uh, he designed the banner, but also the stand including the feet, everything. And then at the top, there's the, you see the papal crown, the yeah. keys and the pro Petri set yeah. cross. Yeah. yeah, the TR, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, to, to give an idea about uh, architect uh, Kuipers, his importance worldwide, he is the architect of the Rijksmuseum with the Rembrandts. In the Berlin's yes. In mm -hmm. Amsterdam. So even in America, mm -hmm. they will connect the name of that architect, yeah, yeah. accuracy. Yes. And such an important architect was the creator of this manner. And that's a yeah. point. And, we, and uh, also here you see the dates of the battles. Yes. 
you see the 5th and the 8th of October for Monueria and Monte Libretti, and the 3rd of November for Mentana and the year 1867. Yeah. So, mostly in the beginning when I was still new at the museum, I was, was it 68 or 67? 67. 67. Yeah. This is. Uh... I know, 67, yeah. yeah. Oh, that. Yes, the deck. So what's going on with the back? Yeah, well, so here we see St. Peter on his throne. And um, we suspect that in the Vatican they found this, um, the important side, and that it hung with this side more in the Italian light. So the other side is a little bit better in quality of in color but this is still very good and vibrant yeah. and uh, on the top left that's uh i don't know if you can see that's the code of palm of france eagle yeah and top right it's imperial eagle eh? yes imperial eagle yes yeah, not um, belgium the belgians and then we come here this is great britain so including Ireland still at that oh, point, gosh. yeah. And that, well, you should know that, <laughs> the United States of America, yes. And you see Prof. Petri said it. Yes, yes. For the chair of Petri. Yes. That's always coming back with the scraps. Yeah. And here you have the project of scraps to make the banner. And so were the other, so the other um, countries were represented here because this banner was made to celebrate all, like all the Zouaves? All the Zouaves, but it is said in the notes that these four countries were the countries that are, are after the Netherlands uh, supplied the most Zouaves at that time. Mm -hmm. I don't know no. exactly because the United States I think more that it's the, 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 yeah it's scarce. Yes, but that's that's what it said. That yeah, at least what? just in mind of Capus. Oh, the, I, I should not uh, relate it with the number of uh, Swabs. No, but so that no. that's in the description. Uh, also, you know, France and Belgium is clear. That's uh, problems. Yeah. That aren't the problems. You see, but they are then. Yes. What's uh, important that uh, you can find it in my study about, uh, it's published in France. It uh, was in, a gift, a gift to the Pope, a gift to the Pope, to the Vatican. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, they tried to become it, to let return to mm -hmm. here. But uh, you know the date, perhaps? Yes. I think my article. But I have it in mind. It returned after the, uh, you know, the the Treaty of the Vatican, yeah, 1929. 29. It returned to the Netherlands. Yeah, it was shipped to Haarlem to the mm -hmm. their the museum, museum, and they said, well, "Okay, we keep it until we have uh, certainty what we are going to do. If there's going to be a museum for Zouaves, etc." And then, as we talked about before, in 1947. When Brother Christopher started his museum, this piece came to Oudenbos 77 years ago. It took 60 years in the Vatican. Yeah. What, what part of the Vatican? Well, it's uh, not really clear, but they've got uh, the sacristy. I mentioned uh, in my study, but I haven't in mind. There are some pictures of this uh, banner in the Vatican. It, they were made probably before they sent it back yeah. here. So, um, well, that's still nice to find out. <laughs> uh, perhaps that's in my article that I got that. Here you have uh, the Master Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is the painting depicting Peter Leon with the 14 red shirts that he. Uh, Beat it. Yeah, 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 really quick, maybe like a one minute story of that since it's a separate video. What what happened here? Yeah. But so you'll try to stay and say here mm -hmm. the pictures of the yeah. cover uh -huh. of the book that it was a story for the youth. Yeah. But you, you see in the background, you see the gate to the yeah. city 
And on the right, you see the city wall. So if you go there nowadays, you can now see the black road from that. It drops narrow. Right. It was very narrow. And you see in the background, you see all the other Zouaves going for the gate in a narrow street. And here we see that Peter Jong has seen the enemy. He tries to prevent them they being surrounded. So he takes his um, gun, uses it as a club or a mace, and uh, he kills 14 of the enemies. You can also have a jail man, the lieutenant. You saw this at the lieutenant. The lieutenant Lieutenant already died. This looks so much better in person. It looked good before, but it looks even better in person. It's just a company against 1,400 Garibaldi's. Well, yeah. Defended after the walls. Mm -hmm. And that in a small street. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, Every military handbook will say, don't do it. <laughs> but they did. Yeah, that, they, 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 had, yeah. they had no choice. But they ended up winning because at the next morning they re the red shirts retreated. Yes, but, so it, they, but, it, but it became dark. On the left you see some houses. Yeah. And um, uh, most of the Zouaves, they retreated to the left in these houses, kept up firing now and then, and they made a hole in the back wall of the house, and they escaped, these wafts escaped that way, they left some wounded, and the next day, when they came here to see what's going on, because then uh, another contingent of wafts arrived for support, they went here and they saw that the Garibaldians left via the back door of the, of the city. We got excellent portraits of uh, Peter Young. Yes, that's him. Wow. Yeah, taller than the average person then, but built like a tree. So what is um what about this uniform right here? Who did this belong to? I should have looked it up. <laughs> it's okay. But this this is this is not Peter Young himself. Yes, yes. But this also you know, let's see. What was Jeff the cloak called again? Uh, this the cloak. Right. But it's uh you have the uniform yes. Yeah. Yeah. They are more important. Uh, I think here it's uh, the book. Because it's uh, the propaganda, <laughs> an example for the youth, the Catholic youth, and Albert probably mm -hmm. in uh, Holland between the inter interbellum. And what's important still are those uh, two before they left home to go home, they all passed to the Holy Father. Asking their the blessing for their and their family, and most of them brought such a blessing from the Pope. Yes. So these are blessing blessings from uh, Dutch Zouaves. Um, the the yeah, the family. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but yes. This one in particular. Yeah, very very interesting. Yeah, we know the names are here. Albert Leenders and Nijmegen. It's noted. And, huh? Yes, it's, it's also not, you can also see it. Uh, Even still today, you can have it yeah. at the Vatican with the name of your mother, yeah. of, uh, your name, and the blessing. Mm -hmm. But they ask it the blessing or themselves, their mm -hmm. family, etc. Most of them brought that at home. Yes, so that is important. Uh, so I, I can imagine that Americans did the same. Huh? Yes. There are yeah. other people than the Dutch of the yeah. of the French. Um, did this, what, what was this? It belonged to Peter Young? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Peter Young. And then we got the death cards of a lot of those Dutch Zouaves over here. Yes. Like you see, Faith was the Will, that's the one from, uh, from Oudenbosch. Van Lege, that's the one that is paper missing the most. So it's all examples of what you appeared in. Uh, yeah. So we have different um, battles that happen. Yeah, this could have been. So this one is very important. 
the Fournel Canes. The for the du, du Fournel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so because I have a the book translated that's released of the Du Fournel's the biography. So if anyone wants to read that, they should go on my website at, or Amazon and purchase a copy. And this was, image was used for the front cover. I suppose that you have that scan. Huh? I, I do have the scan, yeah. It's about now. Uh, so here is Emmanuel Dufournel's martyrdom. I think you're from Nash, huh? Yeah, yeah. From Nash. Oh, Van Nash. Yes, yeah. Van Yeah. That's two brothers and different places. And these are the heroes of uh, Albano who died. And died when helping the uh, victim yeah. after Cobra. Yeah. They're yeah, poor friends. What? The wounded from um, what, the 1867 campaign? Yes. Um, on the top left, you see uh, Petrus Heikamp from Amsterdam. He died at Banyuea. He is said to be the first Zouar that was killed, killed in battle. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. yeah. And here we've got the three heroes of Albano, and there we've got the paintings yeah. depicting by a swat in hero. So what you see here are four zouaves and they are carrying uh, a coffin. And you see that three zouaves of them are looking away. So they are the ones, the three who died. The fourth one is more or less looking towards us or at least on the side. It said that he represents the ones or the one of the ones that survived. Or oh, that will add, it's the Belgium. Because the dwarf four mm -hmm. died by the cholera, but Christian mm -hmm. the Belgian died in Rome, you see. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they were following the demands of their lieutenants. Yes. There is all. There is a more. And he's right there in the corner. And he's yes. carrying a body. He said, You are free to do what you want, but I. I will carry the bodies to the cemetery. And the cemetery is beside at the back grounds. But you will have all the pictures in my book because I've even the tombstone of the Dutch suburbs mm -hmm. in the cemetery of uh, Albano. Still existing. But important to tell that it's painted by a suburb too. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have, uh, it's attributed to a suburb. So speaking of all the tributes, we got all these medals in front of us. Yes. So it's really about the, the ones here in the middle. And of which they, we had two, we have put in two, so you can see the front and the back. And then it begins here on the left with the Castel Fiordardo, may die. The one they earned in 1860. And then you go on. Marinti, yes. So, like the Zouaves that helped the cholera victims at Albano, they were awarded that medal. And then we've got. So, it was a medal for good, uh, good <laughs> conduct. Yeah. yeah, doing good things. Excellent, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Set out so in different grades, eh? mm -hmm. and they became the second grade. And then, and then you had uh, gold, silver, and uh, bronze, mm -hmm. copper. But you shall see in Copa better all to see you. Mm -hmm. But okay. And here, of course, you've got the Mentana cross that all the soldiers that were in service at the time that these battles took place, they got this medal. So not only the Zouaves, but also the French and all other, um, um, the, the, the Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. everyone. Oh, okay. yeah. But not only the Zouaves, uh, so the, the, the Goons and all the, the other divisions. Because this is that uh, famous Castel Fidardo mm. uh, that uh, you remember that I told. It's silly that it was the start normally given mm -hmm. after the time, after 60, 
is ik ze van door de Aris en de Zwaanse Gors, moet er van bewerken. Maar in jouw jaar, het was al in. Wil je zelf vertellen? 1880, ja, ja. 1880, 20 jaar later. Became that medal for Castel Fidardo. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. They were gone. But yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, and this is also a rather unique medal because it's uh, Castel Fidardo, because they got a medal for a battle that was lost. Yes. And usually you get a medal for battles that are won. Yes. It was the whole campaign received medals and they had the different claps. The clasps that would say what battle you participated you, in. You could buy them the clasps. Yes, yeah. So for the other ones, it's, it was an addition you could do yourself if you wanted to. So the smaller, the smaller medals. What? When did they wear the smaller medals versus the oh, bigger? Oh, the skim. Yeah. So oh, this were, this were for day to day use, huh. like we see on. Uh, Ah, here we go. Here's it. Uh, so we wear we wear them for day to day. You can imagine yeah. when 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 we have the big celebration in the cathedral, and I have my medals. Yeah, I will not use all those big. Yeah, one. Hey, you in a military uniform. Mm -hmm. That's other thing. But on a costume, you you just used the the diminution. Yes. Okay. At the smaller ones. Of course, commander and uh, star, mm -hmm. that's something else said. And uh, you can use that. Yes. And the, I mean, that's the reason why. And you have them still smaller as you have them here. And you saw, shall see, yeah. uh, the ribbons, the ribbons are often not the right ones mm -hmm. because this is crazy. The colors are not uh, good. You see, uh, that's the ribbon of the Mentana used for the Benemerenti. Yes. Eh? Uh, you can yourself, see? That there is a golden chain with their mini, mini, mini medals. <laughs> and then were these the paperwork that went associated with it? Yes, yes. That's the certificates you get from the, for the different many. Oh. Very, very interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, this is an important tool. Uh, not well known. In 1892, when they were uh, raising up at the uh, Global Association, Perfurpeiri, on demand, special demand of the charity to make one, all those different uh, associations of all swaps with acts, mm -hmm. they made a small, typical medal in for the old swaps. Mm -hmm. And it's in it's this one, right? It's Man, if you see the top fail photos in need of it, and this is me. Nee, een fantasie. Een fantasie, maar in feite is dat van de uitstrijd. Nee, van de botten. Verstaan. Uh, dat is het uh, medal uh, voor de volontair de Louest. De French de mm -hmm. uh, French Sherman War. Uh, het is waar, ze in de regiment. Mm -hmm. But of course not Zwaars, mm -hmm. it must be Volontaire de Lewist. And as they were uh, not obliged, but free, yeah. volunteers, they got afterwards the medal of the war, but with a baguette of volunteers. Mm. Uh, you, you need both, eh? Mm -hmm. And then this, this is the uh, box for... Um, yeah, it, Augustus Wills, so the brother of Noxio, who fought yeah, the oh, Carlist. Oh, you know, in Yas, yeah, it's, it's a little bit uh, August. Yeah. They, they, they were in the volunteers, they were not. They were, let's say, Rikis. Yes. Rikis, eh? Uh, for, uh, yeah, 
No, Rick was so cool. What you, the, you have you know the, the term the Rick is in the army today, eh? Who are looking for the the, the adventure? Explorers. Oh, adventure. Okay. Explorers, yes. Er, adventure. So he was engaged and not engaged. In fact, mm -hmm. is there a story behind the different statues of the of the Zwabs? Oh, no, ready and held on. Here. Yeah, so these were meant to represent the the three that died at Alba now. Well, that's uh, one uh, story, but this these two, the all three were made by the same a monk of the Abbey of Saint Sixth in Belgium, uh, but they were at that point not meant as a set of three. It's a set of two and one loose one that was uh, in Father de Kruijf's own private office in Amsterdam and these two were in Autodos and now they are all three here. And then I, we have a lot of pictures of the Battle of Montana that, that yeah, going on. Enough, yeah. So the Battle of Montana was, you know, was the most important victory that the Zwabs ever had. Yeah, but you have to be careful with the pictures, but, uh, because it happens that they uh, are mixing with other pictures when well, it's nothing to do with Quintana. Mm -hmm. That happens. And a uh, little point, as he told, it's made by a Belgian monk. Mm -hmm. You see the uh, Dutch heroes were mm -hmm. made by Belgian monk. Mm -hmm. So the basilic is built with Belgian bricks too. Oh, interesting. And that's because of it were all depending from the Abbey in Belgium. Oh, the, the Dutch, the, maybe it should, it should be called the Dutch and Belgium Museum. Yeah, the, from Hemingsen after Napoleon, they had the Abbey in uh, Bornem, mm -hmm. but they were the monks who delivered the service in Oudenbos as a priest. Yes, because you're here below the big rivers in the Netherlands. Yeah. And historically, this area has a lot with what's now Belgium. And really, in the time, like we said before, the train didn't even pass all the way through here when you came from Amsterdam. You had to take the boat. So logistically seen, it's also was also, you know, uh, easier to it's, get things from it's Belgium. It's easy to explain to an American. You have Belgium and you have... West and East Flanders, and you have Limburg. Yes. Limburg depended from the Liege, Lutich, uh, the, the priests, bishops. And then you had the Duke of Brabant in the center. And the North is still today here, North Brabant. In the center you have Antwerp. And below, in the south, you have Brabant with Brussels and Leuven. So that's easy. Yeah? Well, we'll keep that in mind. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. We'll... But so you see yeah. the relation. Yeah. The um, one more thing I definitely want to go over in here is the this the story of this medal. It's uh, it was one of the the when they visited the Pope. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This medal. The, the Pope handed out these medals, and this is from the Virgin Mary. And so he got this certificate that it was handed out by Pope Faiz the Mine. It was, uh, yeah, during one of their several, what's it audiences. called? Yeah, audiences with the Popes. Yeah. 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 All swabs became comments from all Sintus pictures of the Pope, Sintus medals of the Pope. And so uh, one wrote, Yes, but I give you a better one than our friends. He's <laughs> only sent a very cheap one. <laughs> okay. So the whole way we use for our portrait gallery. Yes. So what we want to show here is Zouaves as they were then mm -hmm. at the time and Zouaves in later life. Because here we shall see Zouaves de Boer. This is a picture from 1940 just before the Netherlands got involved in the Second World War. And it was 
the celebration of 100 years of the Brothers of St. Louis. And there were only a handful of Zouaves still alive. And this was the only one who was still capable of traveling to Oudenbosch from Amsterdam. And he did so. And um, he had a little speech and that's been recorded. And we have this record are now digitized. So that's also something I think is very interesting thing of getting uh, uh, someone who was actually there all those more than 150 years ago that we can actually yeah. hear him tell a bit of his, his story. So, so he always saw, see several different photographs. When they saved up some money, he went to Rome to the photographer and had you know, the picture taken. But that's only the small pictures. You have to Ad open on there and you open there. That's Ellen Brook mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. That was his set to be kept of good service. Oh. That's important for you to combine. You see? Yeah, it's in his military passport. So you can see there only these small photographs, and these are enlargements from a later date. And what you can see is there were only two or three photographers active in Rome at that time. Yes. And you can really see that they went to the same photographer because this one is standing to the same, next oh, to yeah, the yeah. same pillar as That's this yeah. one. And that one is standing against the same backdrop as this one. The brothers uh, Alessandri were very famous photographers in Rome. But you had uh, quite a lot of them, mm -hmm. but most in Rome. And sometimes... <laughs> That's not a swap. This is the devil of the Pope. Oh, oh well, we talked about and earlier. And his family is the prime, was recently a prime minister of Holland. Of oh, really? the yeah, Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, and even... Echt, was die ook niet NATO? Dat moet jij meer weten. Of in Europa? Nee, nee, hij is nee. later... Uh, nee. okay. um, Gouverneur van Limburg geweest, ah, yes. dat is een lokale zaak. Hij was de prime minister en hij was family of Antonius van Acht. En they called, hij was small, mm -hmm. and they called him the devil of the Pope. Yeah. And uh, if I'm not wrong, it was him who was, you see, he got the golden medal. Who was in Albano mm. and went in the cave to put in to arrange the bodies to save place. That was the worst place you can't imagine. Yes. When you see the pictures in my book, you can imagine what it would be. Wow. Very interesting. Oh, and we have a bust of. Uh, <laughs> yes. And this is the bust of King William III. So he was king at that time, and he had to give the, his consent for the Dutch to go and serve in the army, in the foreign army. And we know that from about 3,000 Zouaves, uh, only a hundred of them asked that permission, and almost all of them also got the permission because the king is supposed to have said, if they will fight that good for the Pope, they will do that also for me. No problem. They can go. So that's why the bust of King William III is here in the, in the museum. He was Protestant, but it seems... I was there on that time, but it seems that he always had a portrait of a spare with him. Oh, wow. And that's the worst in Holland. All those who didn't ask permission, they lose their civil rights. That means no vote, no employment. Beggar. They became beggar. And many of them. Uh -huh. Quite a lot. More than in America. And that's the reason why they were raising that front to help the poor old swabs. Uh -huh. They made uh, cards 
which uh, the Battle of Metana by Lionel Royer, eh? and they sold it to raise funds. And every year the Pope was sending money to. But in the in the end, most of the Dutch Zouaves that lost their citizenship did not have really a negative impact because they weren't allowed to vote. But if you won, um, wanted to vote, you needed to pay a exact number of tax. And the most of them didn't. And they didn't get a state pension. But that's why there was fundraising amongst themselves. And a lot of them gradually got work back work in the chat more poor men here than we had in Belgium. That, 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 that was uh, typical in Holland. And we had not we had funds too to help mm -hmm. not as in not the same way. Holland's here. here. Yeah. This this one. I know this one is uh his, on his grave it's the same image. It's the same image, yes. Indeed, and he is pointing here towards Rome. This is Joaf Kuppers uit de Roer Rond. And he's pointing towards Rome. And in on his great monument, he's also standing like this in a statue, but his wife is sitting at his feet. Spread the rosary too, right? Yes. And, and um, that's uh, nice, eh? <laughs> but there locally say, well, he is probably not pointing to Rome, but to the local cafe. Oh. <laughs> um, there was the the scripture on his uh, tomb. Doesn't it read the the cause of the Pope is the cause of God? Yeah, I think so. Right there, yeah. uh, yes. So this is a collage that the Zouave made from his time, oh, yeah. from the Sharet. Oh, no, the the top of top of top. But I have uh, the postcards. Uh, I have everything in. Uh, but, but you see, he is a one, it's one. important for this museum too, because and Brother Christopher made a pilgrimage to Basmots, mm -hmm. the old castle mm -hmm. with uh, from the Charit. And the family stood, the descendants stood in America. So that became a farm, let's say little bit destroyed you know, with somebody who was there and he found a mass of documents on the floor oh man so he saved he saved and brought it to Audemars and that was the start of his connection in uh, 76 I think I did the same way. I went to Basmots. And the chapel there mm -hmm. was so destroyed that I could enter through the window in the chapel. Gives you an idea. And I took pictures. Inside, it seems that it are the only existing interior pictures. They published in France. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have them, of course, in uh, Kuckerberg. And as Brother Christopher did, he saved the documents. I saved a part of the windmill. The low part, but created by Lionel Roy. Oh, wow. And it's in Kuckerberg now. Oh, wow. In fact, it's one of the rare, scared, only things reminding from the original. And it was uh, for the 25th anniversary of the regiment that they had a big gathering in Basmox, and uh, the little chateau was offered to the general. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So I see it to the middle yeah. of the middle as Christopher saved the, the documents. Interesting. It's a nice word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but what we see here is Cooper's. He was a publisher. He was a man yeah. with money. So he could 
get this painting yeah, made. Hey, good, painting, yeah. yeah, good to have this grave monument. And then we see here as a bit of a contrast, <laughs> simpler zouaves that we make oh. with uh, the bands of cigars and uh, other pictures. This collage. The, these are these are cigar bands. Yes, these yeah. are cigar oh, wow. bands. Yes. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's very, you did it very beautifully. You must see that as popular art. Yes, yeah, yeah. Folk art. Folk art, yeah. yeah. But mm. he is the, let's say, the tandem with arts. Mm -hmm. Who rent the association of the old man. Oh, okay. Do the windows have any significance? Uh, not in the, as such as the windows, right? but... They are from um, uh, Hillefond. Yes, the, um, um, in the in the Netherlands there was still a long time a priest appointed as chaplain to the Zouave veterans. Oh, really? Yes, ah, yeah. really. As van Leeuwen. Van Leeuwen. Yes, part van Leeuwen. And these windows came oh. from him. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, so these uh, these were in his rectory. He was the last chaplain of the Schwabs, and when the last uh, Schwab died in 1947, six, six, okay, then he dissolved. He said, "Now we stop with the movement." Yeah, and then we were only in Belgium who continued. Ah, yeah, that is technique. Yeah. And and this also we have this photo hanging here from this very old Zouave to point out to people, you know, they were very proud to Mixed. be Zouave. So until uh, their old age, they kept putting on the uniform. Mm -hmm. Because um, generally you say it was between 17 and 40 years old to become Zouave. Mm -hmm. um, exceptions could be made, but that was more or less the rule of thumb. So that's why we've got this very old looking Zouave that he was. Oh, this, he, this isn't him in his old age. This is him in his old, in age, old age when he was already retired as Zouave, oh, okay. of course. And yeah. then you said he joined with you. There are us who were in there. Funeral, buried. Yes. Their costume. Yes. Wow. And uh, you can compare that with the First World War and the Second World War. The veterans mm -hmm. have their portrait. With their medals in the kader. Yeah. It's the same. Yes. For them, it was the same as our veterans of World War One. On yes. You see, you must uh, have that idea. Is there anything about uh, significant about Lawrence, Lord Lawyers? This was a portrait that some time he had. Uh, yeah, and very, very beautiful portrait. Yeah. Uh, the bed for eggs. If the veterans of uh, 1830, mm -hmm. when we separated from Holland, sorry, it's no, no, it is, but that's it. I'm Flemish nationalist. The great Netherlands from old times. I had the flag, the lion. On the DM effort, show I the elephant, but 21, show I, Belgium fish, that's nothing for me, you see. <laughs> but okay, in 30, the veterans became older. Mm -hmm. So, in the older years, in the 80s, 1890, the last ones were on the National Fist T Day. Driven in a carriage uh -huh. to come and bid. The Swaves in the years uh, 1930 in Kortrijk in West Flanders, when there was a procession or something special, the three last ones were sitting in an open car driving into town. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And when there are processions, hey, as you saw with that uh, little boy, there was a peloton of swaves. Yeah. And nowadays, nowadays, we they asked me for documentation in Kwan. 
Er is een Brookmans, dat is in de Maloense, in de zuid of België. Daar hebben ze historische marsjes aan de Zander en Meus, door rivers. Als processions, maar militairen. Mm -hmm. Napoleon en al de historische, als je hebt met Independent Day, mm -hmm. met uh, Republican, of uh, met uh, Independence uh, Soldiers en de uh, uh, Civil War Soldiers. Zo uh, so you have all group of men. En in Twin, die had een groep of papal swaps. Already marching since. Uh, uh, let's say 1870. Yes. To take it easy. I in, with the visit of the Pope in 1985, they made a medal for decorations. I got it. No, oh, well, so I was in good contact with them. I'm one of the rare who have it still uh -huh. uh, that medal. You see, uh, I have some in uh, Cookerberry. Um, Nowadays, they are still marching into processions as papal swaps. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You shall see the pictures in my special number about our celebration. Mm -hmm. They are firing their rifles, yeah, yeah. tambour, etc. And now I was working with a friend of mine in Morlawe since a year. They have a peloton swaps. En de eerste zondag na 29 juni, de feestje van Pieter, hebben ze een maas in Marlawe. En nu heb je de French swaps, maar ook de peloton papel swaps. Dat is nieuw gecreëerd. So dus we hebben nog steeds die traditie dat je kunt compare met de Canadian. Union Alette, mm -hmm. uh, they, up to the 1970, they marched in all processions in Canada. Eh? Uh, they, it was a thing as the boys could. Mm. You can compare that. Yeah. They have caps, they have medals. Uh, I just had the contact too late to become their medal, but I have one mm -hmm. that I presented in the museum. You see? Ja, en hier, ja. Ja, dat is jouw. Ja, So this is Ignaz Wills. Ja. Yeah. Commander. Commander, yes. In his final, uh, final moments. <laughs> when he gets the banner of the Carlist Suaves. Goes over the barricades and says, Men, who will follow me? Who will uh, get our flag? And after this, he... Uh, he was shot and he, he died. Do you have his uh, one there? Yeah. Yes. That's uh, both brothers. In yes. And what's down here? What the... This is yeah. from... Uh, that's another... That's all. It's another study. That was most of the Ghanish perhaps. So this is... is um, well, to recap... He um, was a Zouave, a papal Zouave, Ignaz Wills. Um, after the, his, unfortunately for him, uh, when all the major events were taking place in Rome, he was in hospital. And uh, after that, when it, uh, it was calm again in Rome, um, he still sought activity. He wanted to go and fight. So he went to fight for the Carlists in Spain, because one of the brothers of the Carlist pretender was also with the Zouaves, so that was how the link came to be. And he went to northern Spain to fight for these Carlists, and um, at that time it was only a very short-lived adventure. Uh, they lost and they were taken prisoner, and um, his brother had a lot of difficult time in Rome to talk and talk and talk and talk to make sure that he wouldn't be uh, marked as a deserter of the papal army. But then later, 
he also um, was in battle in the Franco-Prussian Wars. Mm -hmm. And again later, they returned to Spain, northern Spain, uh, for the Carlist cause. And in the end, um, he died there in Igualada in Spain, what is depicted here in this, this portrait. After him, August became the commander. Yes, so his brother took over as commander. But the influence of Wills, the influence of Wills here in Holland was that important that quite a flood of Holland, of Dutch, old Swabs, went to Spain to fight with him. Yes, at the. Uh, I have uh, a, complete, uh, I've, uh, a complete list of names and so on. Of, uh, and quite a lot of them are from Holland. There are uh, at least 20 from Holland. Yeah. And there were more, they say there were more that were willing to come, but then in the end yeah. it was over. Yeah. So, and I know as we talked about in our interview, uh, the reason that Ignacy said that he wanted to go and fight was because he viewed the cause in Spain as the same as the cause in Rome. Yeah. The cause of, by defeating the Republicans in Spain and establishing the Bourbon King, uh, that would uh, that would be beneficial to Rome. He's, it was yeah. the same counter-revolutionary fight. But it was in fact special uh, to uh, his friendship with the Bourbon. Yes, yeah, yeah. Brother of the Pretende. Yeah, and with, and we got the picture of him right here. Yeah. Who was also his wall. Yeah, and... Very nice. And then here, first of all, here we've got a picture of the breach near, near Porta Pia. Yes, yes. But there were also some Zouaves that went with the White Friars of La Vigerie to Africa as a kind of bodyguard. So that's yeah, also what we. Yes. Yeah. So that's also what we Van show Mille. here. Van Meel, that's from the next town, Hoover. Yes, from, so the one on the left. He's from the next town here, uh, Hoover. We know that he returned, um, but I don't yeah, know where he, where he went uh, after. And this is one of the documents in Arab related to this uh, passport for one of these, of these men. Uh, and then here again, we have got another display, and this is again getting back to the Carlist Suaves. That was the paint. Yes, the uh, Alfonso de Bourbon. Yes. Uh, you can uh, buy his uh, portrait, original, today. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, 1,300 uh, euro. That's a little expensive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, but it's, uh, you can buy it <laughs> now. No, 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 obviously. Yes. yes. Um, and so these are, this is a Carlos Zouave right here. No, it's this, with, the, with the hat and... Yes, but that's the chaplain. Oh, that's the chaplain. Yeah. Yeah. So what are, the, what are these other artifacts that are in here? Well, this point you see here, that's banner. from oh, what wow. you see there, oh, that's really cool. from the banner, yeah. Why, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So that's the same point from the stick that the banner or the him. Barrett. Yes, the, yes, yes. The, the catalyst. Yeah. Still today, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. They're very active they, in Texas. Uh, they are fighting for independence still today, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> the pretendent married with a princess daughter of the Queen of Holland here, oh. but separated. Mm -hmm. And it was all aggression in that time because he was Catholic, mm -hmm. and here they are Protestant. So. The daughter of the of the queen became Catholic in Holland. That was not simple. Yeah, there were some people. That's not simple. Yeah. And they married in Rome, not in Holland, yeah. because politically yeah. speaking, it was not done. And yeah. so he, she entered into Catholic movement. Movement problem too. Politics in politics. 
against Spain, hè? Hè? Uh, becoming independent from Spain. Hè? Dat was diep tot in de prinses of Holland was Mille is in, in, in volgend in dat weg. Het Ursen, I've met in Rome when he was an ambassador at the Holy See. Zo, mm. yeah. so, that I met Ignaz, the son of August. Yes. Oh, wow. So the nephew of the, the uh, nephew. Uh, uh, Ignaz will, yeah. we are here. He was a priest and he yeah. published this book. And this is, uh, oh, I didn't know they were related. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. No. It's, it was his uncle. Interesting yes. for the Carlist. And uh, I've uh, in my uh, records quite a lot of pictures that he took in Spain from the town mm -hmm. and from all places, etc. Was this I have uh, all a collection of? Yeah. Was this book translated into Spanish at all? I don't mm -hmm. think. No, not but you know. have a very standard book now about yes, the yes. Slav Carlists. Mm -hmm. See. Um, and you must be careful with some passages and the list of names dying, and so it's not always here very correct. Okay. In every book you have, you can find a mistake. The the sticks and the the stick and the rock. What are the what is that symbol or what is that? Well, this is uh, yeah. The, it's the cane. It's a it's a cane. Uh, one what from one of the generals, the Carlist generals. Okay. Who commanded uh, one of the carnists here? And this this is a piece of shrapnel. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, perhaps that uh, modulo, the modulo of the statue. Yeah. So this is from the statue that's outside in front of the basilica here. Or the front racing. Yeah. <laughs> this this was uh, the mock up. This was the model they used. Before they made the, the actual statue, the actual statue out. Yeah. So this one, only the thing it has is lost his hand. Yeah, but all the rest is uh, is the same. We got an old Zouave meetup too over here. Yes, yes. From one of these uh, local, I think it's from the Hague. You see here, yeah. their banner. Yeah. Uh, in the book I prepared of the history. After safety, I have all those associations with their flags and mm -hmm. etc. Et because the very, very first was Amsterdam and mm -hmm. Utrecht. So these different these different flags that are in here, those these are all different banners of the associations. Yes, you see they're all different place names like here, The Hague. Yeah. This one is from ah, Haarlem. Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Gouda. Is the next one. Rotterdam is a good example because you had, it, it was the first, or to say it, mm -hmm. eh, they that, the very first, even before 17, mm -hmm. and you had two associations in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. And that is typical for Holland, that they made this curtain and that they had you see, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, that they made trouble and that they separated and had two mm -hmm. associations. And one was only Holland and the other cooperated with Belgium. Mm -hmm. That's typical mm -hmm. for Holland. Mm -hmm. So I made a study about, yeah. So uh, this, uh, it's, it's uh, not only this uh, banner, it's also the case. Yes. It's the case is made for the banner, and it stood in the uh, in the cafe or the hall where the Zouaves met in Amsterdam for years and years and years. Yeah. And what about? Is it the same thing with this one? See, if he fit the Yes. Yeah. But yes. under protection of the Michael. Yeah. Michael. And these are, are the, the names. names eh? The names of the president, of the uh, yeah, the brother and the member. They named the associations here in Holland Brotherhood. You see, and then we can see here these two yeah. things. You know, it was um, 
Rederijkerskamer. So it was also a social thing, these Zouave brotherhoods. And here they've got the Rederijkerskamer, so that's um, like they performed plays. So um, that's also the social aspect of these brotherhoods. In crowds, singing, music, yeah. making music. That's what I thought here in Holland is a social affair. Social affairs. And something that you may not uh, miss. That's uh, over. Yes. I have it uh, original at home too. After the charge, famous charge on December 2nd in uh, 1870 in Wanyi, all the wounded were taken to the hospital and it was a sister who accompanied and they weren't allowed to pass from the Germans and that sister forced it and said to the officer, Sherman officer, and we shall go. Very famous, very famous. You see? Yeah. And that is the sonist, the general, and he is as severe, and they will make him holy. It was really the general, Catholic general. And in Luanyi, he was that blessed that he lay all the night wounded in the snow. But my God, say now it goes. No pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Oh yes, that's the that banner. This is it, mate. Two go into charge to attack Rwanyi. And the old Swafs in France made a copy for the Dutchman. And they presented in Utrecht in 1892. Then you had a big, big reunion from all Swaves. There is a main picture, you know, I it here, said, and be very, 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 very big, 1,500. I'm imagining you. They were gathered. And the French, which are Charlotte, etc., of it, this replica of the banner of Monangi to the Dutch Swaves. And then with acts, they filed it the Global Association. And all the other were absorbed as sections. Yes, yes. The original was made by uh, sisters mm -hmm. of in France. And after the war, it went to Basmot, the king, uh, as uh, Christopher said mm -hmm. a lot, and I say, at the glass. <laughs> Where is it? No, no. Because that's the importance of that standard. Yes. I made uh, in uh, 67 yes. a study about uh, the music of Papel Swaves. And uh, therefore, I passed for several days here under <laughs> the records to look. And this is a very good one. I have it at home too. And that is made by the Vieux Bois. You know what it means in French. Mm -hmm. The old wood in, in English and in Dutch, out the bus. Oh. <laughs> so it was the Nadis from here, from the Swaths, who made the carol, mm -hmm. the music. <laughs> Drop the swaths for piano, and his pseudonym was the old woods. How the was interesting, yeah. So uh, here we see some souvenirs that swaths brought back from uh, from Rome. The relic of Pius the Night of the mm, wow. yes. A lot of relics here. So they were they gifted a lot of relics. 
Yeah, they were gifted a number of relics. Yeah, you can of course um, ask yourself if they are all real or that they maybe some uh, uh, yeah I handyman <laughs> yeah that's in Rome gave it, them something. No, 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 but no, 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 no. There no. are it also can be good. good at home. I have the colors of both these twelve, oh, wow. the original, mm -hmm. and in our collection. From Pope Sedi, they have the original from Pope Pio Nono. Oh, wow. So now in Leuven at the university. And the way to get it was simply, God, not me or you, but mine is coming from the general act of Premontre, the head of all the order of. Norbertin, and he was with Pope Pio XII, and he bought the calot, and he gave it to the Pope, and the Pope gave his to him. Exchange. An exchange. And so I have it, and it's in the museum. And so we have one of Pio Nono too. So it can be real. Oh yes, that's real. That's yeah, real, yeah. absolutely. But that's the way how it works. Yeah. And uh, many, many times, the Swabs met the folk who was driving, walking in Rome, and armed and blessed and so on. And he gave medals. They always tried to have an audience to meet the Pope to become medals. So there came more than once a regiment order to depend, to take contact yourself at the Pope, or to try mm -hmm. to enter in the Vatican to go to the Pope. It was forbidden. But you could ask and mm -hmm. pull out the regular oh. way. But uh, everybody tried. Yes, if all the Zubats at once tried to get to the Pope, it's going to be busy. Yeah. Yeah. And so there were regiment orders, I have then at home, stipulating defendants. You will, you will be in prison, huh? <laughs> you may not, huh? Yeah. Uh, what is um, this uh, no. material here? What is this? That's for the president from the association. Oh, oh here you see, you see Pops. Mm -hmm. You see Paps and Ars Loimans. Ars and Loimans. In Wils, August Wils. That was uh, the, uh, the board of presidents and members of the National Association from mm -hmm. after uh, 92. Interesting. And here you see some more souvenirs, some more relics. Oh, yeah. That we have uh, in the collection that two hours brought back. This was very popular. Yeah, the Holy Base. Everybody brought that hat home. It was very popular. And uh, this kind too, I have several of them. And uh, often there is uh, a test that it's real. Huh? Mm -hmm. And here it can also sometimes be a Seattle as a it's not uh, big or not a legs. bit of rock from the Vatican mm. Gardens. Yeah. Or that's more yeah. elaborate drawings. I, I have this uh, brought by Adams, a servant. What is this interesting? That is a relic too, third class. Mm -hmm. You know, a relic, mm -hmm. first, second, mm -hmm. third class. This was put around the Real column mm -hmm. of the martyr of Jesus on Good Friday, mm. where he was flagellated. Mm -hmm. And that just the length going around that column. Oh, wow. You see, it does mass. It's actually important to bring home. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, there. We are now 2024. In 100 
60 years ago, mm -hmm. they never left their village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. quite, so it was quite something for these, yeah. Yeah. these yeah. men yeah. to go well, a thousand miles from home yeah. and uh, somewhere that they've never <laughs> been and somewhere well, that they probably never returned. Uh, they made the most of it. They made the most of it. I, I could definitely, yeah. uh, I, I would make the most of it too. Yeah, and here these, you know, these are from Zouave Brotherhoods. Yeah. And also, you know, that's, they used to help protest meetings. They kept protesting against the loss of the territories of the Pope. So also you see now and then pictures like at the end and like these programs all for protest meetings. Especially here in uh, Holland, it was popular. You see, as I told, in that relevant, upstanding, after hundreds of years, but the Tatisme. Eh? It is important that's that uh, reunion with the Sharits mm. in Utrecht. 1892. I have the invitation at the moment. Yeah. And then more or less we automatically yeah. come to the end of the Zouave yeah. era. Yeah. And this okay. is a telegram that was sent to Brother Christopher about the passing of the last Zouave. Oh, wow. Is the last Dutch Suave, probably the last Suave in the world, Petrus Verbeek in 1946. So, an Irish. Salt Ah, yeah, 46. Yes. I made a study about yeah. him. Yeah. And because he was not originated from here, he came uh, from uh, at the coast. Uh, yeah. And so, um, yeah. after his passing, was the passing of the last Zua. So he even survived two world wars. And that was the end yeah. of an era. Very, very fast. Uh, nearly the end. Mm. Because the very end was when the last died, the government said, oh, all those Zouaves who lost their citizenship. They can have it back. After they're dead. Yeah. After the death yeah. of the last oh, one. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching the museum tour here at the Dutch People's Wild Museum. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Arno, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I know my audience really enjoyed it. Um, thank you all for sticking around for two hours. Um, these little facts, these little factoids that you got from Mr. Levin and Arno, uh, you really can't find anywhere else. Um, so it was a real treat to be able to listen to you so thank you so much mr levin for coming down and giving us the tour and a little bit of your knowledge you're an expert uh, worldwide about the people's wants it was a pleasure and i wish you good luck as i told you i'm the past you're the future you your uh, goal is to keep memory of the swaps alive i did it uh, during nearly 60 years now it's up to you i keep to the message thank you and yeah the orders all right so you heard it here folks um for the younger ones it's up to us to bring forth and keep the memory of the papal's wafts alive that's what we here do well, that's what we do here at papal's waft international we promote and preserve the history of the papal's wafts the best way you could do that right now is by liking subscribing our content uh, buying our books and reading up more on the Zwabs. And stay tuned in the future for our uh, what we have planned. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline. Just please be patient and reach out if you want to help us at all. Thank you very much. Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, pray for us. Blessed Pope Pius IX, pray for us.